Good day everyone. This is Dr. S. Marishanya Clarishia, Assistant Professor of Commerce, Jamma Mehmet College. And in this video, I'm going to explain the difference between factoring and forfeiting in financial services. Before moving into the concept, let me explain what is factoring. These are the contents of which we are going to see in factoring. We are going to see the contents related to parties who are related to factoring and what is actually the term factoring, why is factoring important, important, how it is important and we are going to see the various types of factoring, functions of factoring and the process of factoring and also the advantages and disadvantages of factoring. Now moving over to the concept, what is factoring? Factoring is a financial transaction in which business sells its accounts receivable to a third party at a discount. Factoring is essentially a financial service designed to help firms manage their trade, credit or receivables effectively. It is, in fact, a way of offloading a firm's receivables and credit management onto the factoring agencies or to the factor. Now, why is factoring so important? Factoring is first of all important because it is a fast way for companies to raise money, shortens the collection process. It also allows the companies to bring in money without taking on a new debt. No need to have any collection department in case of factoring. It just transfers the risk totally in case of factoring and how it is going to work. Now what is factoring actually? Factoring is a sale of book debts by a firm who is a client to a financial institutions that is called as a factor on the understanding that the factor will pay for the book debts as and when they are collected or on a guaranteed payment date. Normally, the factor makes a part payment usually up to 80% immediately after the debts are purchased thereby providing immediate liquidity to the client. So factoring is normally defined as an asset based means of financing by which the factor buys up the book debts of a company on a regular basis paying cash down against receivables and then collects the amount from the customers to whom the company has supplied goods. Thus factoring provides firm with a source of financing its receivables and also eases the process of collecting the receivables. Now let me move on to the process of factoring. Three important persons are involved in the process of factoring, the client, the customer and the factor. And this is the process of, by which the factoring method is made. So the first process involves the selling of goods or services by the seller to the buyer, who in turn promises to pay to the seller, the buyer or the receiver promises to pay to the seller the amount of the goods or services he has received and then in turn the seller provides the invoice or the bill for the purchase that has been made by the buyer to the factor who is a financial institution and then the next step is made by the factor who pay the offered amount to the seller and the fifth step includes the requisition to pay to the buyer which has been sent from the financial institution that is a factor hence the buyer is bound to pay to the factor the required amount and at last the buyer pays the remaining amount for the goods or the services he has purchased from the seller to the factor or the financial institution which has been tied up in his sales transaction this is a process of factoring now let us see the concept of factoring in six different stages. In the first stage, the client concludes the accredited sale. The second stage includes the client selling the customer's account to the factor and then notifies the same to the customer. The third step includes a partial payment which is made by the factor after adjusting commission and interest in advance against the accounts purchased. The fourth step includes the customer's account which is maintained by the factor and he undertakes any follow-ups for the payment if any. The fifth stage includes that any amount which is due from the customer is remitted to the factor and the last step includes 
on the due date the factor makes the final payment to the client the factor ch- charges a stipulated fee for all the services offered f- by him in cases where the factor has to make an immediate part payment against the debt purchased a higher rate of interest is charged the interest charged is calculated on the basis of the time period between the date of advance payment and the date of actual collection in cases where interest charge is collected up front a discount charge is said to be collected now let us move on to the various functions of factoring the functions of factoring includes factoring provides the main source of finance for the supplier and also it helps in the maintenance of receivables accounts and also in the collection of receivables it also helps in the protection against the payment in case of default now moving on to the various types of factoring which includes the main types of factoring such as full service factoring which offers all of the above functions and also rendering of consultancy services provision of finance against the debts and sales ledger management now move on to the broader types of factoring the types of factoring includes recourse or non recourse factoring advance and maturity factoring conventional and full factoring domestic and export factoring limited factoring selected seller based factoring selected buyer based factoring disclosed and undisclosed factoring now let us see in detail the various types of factoring the first type is recourse factoring here the factor buys the receivables on the condition that the loss arising from non recovery of the receivables will be borne by the client up to 75% to 80% of the invoice receivable in the factor interest is charged from the date of advance to the date of collection loss or non recovery will be borne entirely by the client and the credit risk will be borne entirely by the client and also the factor does not participate in the credit sanction process in case of non recourse factoring the factor is not allowed any recourse if the debt purchased by him turns out to be the bad one or in non recourse factoring the factor charges a high rate of commission since he has to bear all the losses in this type of factoring this type of factoring is most common in the us and uk factoring is primarily done with recourse to the client in india in case of non recourse factoring the credit risk is entirely borne by the factor higher commission is charged for the credit risk which has been borne by the factor and also the factor participates in credit sanction process and approves credit limit to the client to the customer and also the loss or non recovery will also be borne by the factor the next type of factoring involves conventional and full factoring full factoring is a merger of non recourse and advance factoring full factoring incorporates a range of services that includes collection credit protection sales ledger administration and short term finance and the next factoring involves suppliers guarantee factoring this type of factoring involves a factor to approve extending of credit by an importer or a distributor to a customer the distributor after receiving credit approval from the factor makes arrangements for shipment of the goods directly to the customer the factor follows the customer collects the due amount and after deducting his commission makes the final payment to the distributor now the next one is the maturity factoring maturity factoring involves no financing only services the factor provides the client with a credit guarantee for all the customers who orders are approved prior to the shipment thus shielding the client from any bad debt losses it is then the factor's responsibility to collect the net sales proceeds from the customer on the average due date for each month's sales the factor turns over the accumulated funds to the client no interest is charged since the client has taken no advances against his sales prior to the date when they have theoretically matured and have been paid in fact the factor remits to the client whether or not he has actually received payment from the client's customers for all these services the client pays a fee or a service charge computed as a commission or the net sales factored thus maturity factoring does not make any advance payment to the client pay on a guaranteed payment date or on the collection of receivables payment date is fixed by the client 
with a nominal commission is charged and there is no risk to the factor next moving on to the cross border factoring it is it is similar to the domestic factoring which involves four parties in the transaction an exporter an export factor an import factor and an importer the exporter here enters into an agreement with the export factor in his country and assigns him to export receivables as and when they arise payments against factored debt are made in a similar fashion to that of a domestic factoring the export factor enters into an agreement with a factor in the country in which the import factor resides and enters into a contract with him assigning him the task of credit checking sales ledgering and collection for payment of a stipulated fee it is also called as a two factor system of factoring and which involves a high risk at all the levels Forfeiting is a technique of trade finance which has attracted growing interest in the banking sector and the financial process of export oriented countries over the last years. This is certainly due to the fact that in many cases it has proven to be the most efficient instrument when it comes to export finances. Thus, forfeiting is a term generally used to denote the purchase of obligations falling due at some future date arising from deliveries of goods and services mostly export transactions without recourse to any previous holder of the obligation the forfeiter thus will deduct interest that is discount in advance for the whole period of credit and disburse the net proceeds immediately the exporter thus virtually converts his credit based sale into a cash transaction his sole responsibilities are manufacturing and delivery of goods thus creating a valid payment obligation of the importer thus forfeiting here explains the exporters who sell their trade receivables from the importers to a third party for cash now third party receives payments from importer this third party is known as a forfeiter this process is called as a forfeiting which involves the various key points such as that involves an excellent source of funds for both long term as well as short term the value of forfeiting which involves 2 lakh Fifty thousand dollars, which guarantee from importer's bank in the form of letter of credit, exporter's receivables in the form of negotiable instruments. Now moving over to the advantages of forfeiting. Here, the exporters are free from the risk of non-payment and also a protective shield for the fluctuations of the foreign exchange rate has been created, which is easy for the source of fund. and longer credit term is available to the customers it also involves various disadvantages such as more expensive than other commercial credit change here compared to other commercial financial instruments forfeiting is expressed to be the more expensive one and also the preference is made or given only to the developed country The forfeiter fully covers the falling risk associated with the export which involves country risk which is also called as a political and transfer risk he observes the full political risk with recourse or residual liability extraordinary state measures or political incidents like war revolution invasion of civil unrest which could block or enable payments the next risk involves the current current risk or currency risk Floating exchange rates can have the effect of charging the contract value by the considerable amount when converted into the exporter's own currency and can lead to a loss for the eventual holder of the claim. Commercial risk it is a simply an inability or unwillingness of the obligator or a guarantor to fulfill its obligations on due date. Interest rate risk all forfeiting costs are binding and remain unchanged during the whole financing period. The concept of forfeiting involves the four important parties the exporter and the importer the forfeiter the exporter's bank importer's bank that is also called as an availing bank
Here, the first process happens between the exporter and the availing bank. The second transaction involves both the exporter and the availing bank, which then ties up the, both the exporter and the importer, which then connects it to the forfeiting bank, that is, which involves the fourth and fifth process. The forfeiter hears conveys different types of functions such as holding the amount till maturity and sells it to the group of investors and also enables the trade in the secondary market. Now moving over to the basic forfeiting transaction. The first transaction involves the forfeiter and the exporter who has agreed upon a forfeiting agreement which involves directs the sales contract between an exporter and the importer and the next step is the shipment which is made between the exporter and the importer which then connects the bank which issues the guarantee and the next step which involves the Im importer sending documents to the exporter and then the exporter gives documents to the forfeiter and the next and the seventh process involves the forfeiter who pays the cash. And the eighth process involves the forfeiter presenting the documents to the bank at the date of maturity, which in turn the importer pays the bank at the date of maturity. And the last step involves the bank which pays the final amount to the forfeiter at the date of maturity which involves the four important parties for the basic forfeiting transactions exporter, importer, primary forfeiter and the bank. Let me explain the process of forfeiting. Here the availing bank guarantees the notes which is given to the importer and then the note are sent back to the bank. And here the notification is sent by the exporter to the importer who then guarantees the notes which has been sent to the exporter. And then here the notes discounted or on the non-recourse basis who are then providing the finance which are provided to the exporter by the forfeiter. The forfeiter hears makes the alternatives available such as holding the amount till the date of maturity or to sell it to the group of investors or he can either choose an option to trade in the secondary market. This involves the basic process of forfeiting transaction. Now let us move on to the final part that is the difference between factoring and forfeiting. Factoring versus forfeiting. In the state of extent of finance, Factoring usually allows 75 to 80 percent of the value of the invoice, whereas forfeiting involves 100 percent of the invoice value. The credit worthiness involves the factor, does the credit rating in case of non recourse factoring transaction, but in case of forfeiting bank, which relies on the creditability of the availing bank. The services here provided are on the basis of day-to-day -day administration of sales and other allied services, whereas in forfeiting, no services are provided. In case of recourse, with or without recourse is allowed in case of factoring, but it is always without recourse in case of forfeiting. In case of sales, sale is expected only by the basis of turnover, whereas in forfeiting, it is ex expected on the basis of bills. In case of fruitability for the transaction which is having a short term maturity but in case of forfeiting the transaction with a medium term or maturity period. The recourse can be either with, a, with or without recourse but in forfeiting can be without recourse only. The risk here is transferred completely to the seller but in case of forfeiting all the risks are assumed by the forfeiter. The cost of factoring is usually borne by the seller in case of factoring, but in case of forfeiting, it is borne by the overseas buyer who is called as an importer. Here, the coverage of risk covers the whole set of jobs at a predetermined price, but in forfeiting, structuring and costing is done on a case to case. In case of extent of financing, only a certain percent of receivable factors is advanced. 100% of finance is available in case of forfeiting. On the basis of financing, financing depends on the credit standing of the exporter, but in case of forfeiting, financing depends on the financial standing of the availing bank.
the services which are availed by the forfeiter is besides financing a factor also provides other services such as ledger administration etc but in case of forfeiting it is purely financing arrangement in case of exchange fluctuations no security against exchange rate fluctuations is made in case of factoring but a forfeiter guards against an exchange rate fluctuations for a premium charge a contract between the seller and the factor in case of factoring but in case of forfeiting the contract is between the exporter and the forfeiter this is the end of this video thank you for listening